So the, the goal for this talk was I wanted to give as clear a picture as I can of what the JavaScript integration for components looks like. And unfortunately, the, the best way to do that is really just to demonstrate it, uh, which means this is a demo-heavy talk. And uh, so uh, we, hopefully it goes well, uh, but please bear with me if it doesn't. And uh, it's also very difficult to estimate timing with demos, so we might have to skip some things, but we'll see how it goes, and, and hopefully things run smoothly. Um, but just, just fair warning in advance. But my hope is that you'll walk away with a, a good sense of how to use these tools, how to, how to apply these tools, and, and sort of where they fit into the overall component model workflows. Uh, so to just do a little bit of motivation first, I'm gonna take a step back and look at the overall uh, JavaScript ecosystem itself. Uh, so when we talk about the JavaScript toolchain for WebAssembly components, we're integrating with this JavaScript ecosystem, which is a, a module JavaScript ecosystem where we're running a whole bunch of JavaScript modules and we're packaging them up and running them in browsers. Uh, firstly, we're packaging up a whole bunch of code from NPM on node modules. This is running as uh, common JS, uh, and then more recently, native modules, we've finally sort of a third of the way through the transition into like, proper native modules uh, in JavaScript, and that, that's sort of an ongoing process. Um, but we're sort of getting to a place where we've got sort of native modules, and you can, you can run them with these kind of module semantics in, in the browser, uh, in Node.js. Uh, we have other JS environments like Dino, uh, and more recently we have these kind of uh, edge environments that all want to run JavaScript and, and run JavaScript modules. Uh, and uh, the new kid on the block is Bun, which I think is going 1.0 tomorrow, so that's probably one to, to look out for. Uh, and when you're running JavaScript in all of these environments, uh, you also want to be able to run WebAssembly along with your JavaScript. And so uh, the, the sort of ideal that WebAssembly can be something that can just embed in JavaScript like any other JavaScript module is a nice ideal to, to think about. But in reality, you have uh, a whole bunch of JavaScript glue code and you uh, have a WebAssembly module, and then you have a whole bunch of sub-processes running WebAssembly modules, and a whole lot of glue code doing marshalling with all of this. And this is great. It, it allows for the creation of uh, incredible applications. Uh, but if you are a library author, if you want to write code that's going to be shareable and embeddable and different, if you think of all these different runtimes that are running JavaScript in, you're going to need a uh, glue. And what do I mean by, by the glue? Well, this is a good example. So like, ES Build is a library that's a, a, a modern build tool for JavaScript. A uh, really nice one uh, written by Ivan Wallace. And uh, if uh, ES Build needs to be run from WASM, it needs to be instantiated. Uh, so you need to find the WASM. So you need to fetch it from a URL. Uh, you need to compile it. You need to uh, instantiate it with the Go runtime. And then you can finally get your transform method. And this is just like a tiny bit of glue. Obviously, normally in WASM modules, you have uh, a, a whole bunch of JS glue to achieve these sort of things. But this is sort of like absolute minimum if you want to run ES build. Uh, and then if you want to run a library like ES build in all of these other runtimes, how are you going to even be able to achieve that? Uh, for example, you're using the URL spec, the fetch spec, uh, assuming that you can uh, load a file URL. If this is a file scheme that you're running your modules on, will your bundler even include that WASM? Uh, if, for example, Node only just very recently got support for fetch, but it doesn't support file URLs, so this technique doesn't work in Node. And so you now have to have branches, and if you imagine that we've got all these different runtimes that we're running on, you're gonna have a whole bunch of branches as a library author. It, it, it becomes more and more of a nightmare to maintain libraries that can run in different environments and be embeddable first class. And so uh, if, if we want to reduce this, this glue, well, we've got the, uh, the ECMAScript module integration for WebAssembly, and, and this integrates WebAssembly with the ES module system. And more recently, we have the source phase imports proposal, which allows importing uninstantiated WebAssembly modules in the S module integration. And using this approach, we can kind of replace this glue with just a, a direct source import of ES build. So you, you import ES build as a module, it's through the module system, your build tool understands it, it's statically analyzable, and now we just have to instantiate the runtime. But we still have that runtime instantiation step. So what's stopping us from getting straight to importing from WASM? Well, first class embeddability. And this is where the component model comes in. So the component model solves for the embeddability problem of WASM. It gives you these rich interfaces, it's got all the types, and it has first class instantiations, which was the main piece of our glue. Uh, it leans into imports as capabilities, uh, which JavaScript can't do because it has uh, a spillage over its interfaces, whereas the component model has a share nothing linkage boundary, which has a lot of strong security properties that we're able to lean into. 
And so using uh, the component model, if we were to look at this JavaScript module, uh, I could imagine embedding an equivalent component that would look something like this. And, and Luke, please look away. I haven't got it 100% right. Uh, so you could have something like this, where you could import ESBuild as, as a module. You can have the embedded Go runtime. You can instantiate it against its runtime. You can pick off that lifted transform method and Im embed it as an export. And uh, so the component model then subsumes all this, all this JS loop. And so instead of having all this glue, we can now have WebAssembly components with, which internally do all their own linkage setup. And the flip side of that is in solving for embeddability, we also get first class WASM execution environments. So the, 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 the ability for WASM to be able to do its own instantiations and manage its own kind of uh, hooks and, and, and life cycles. Uh, and from a registry perspective, we get the MPM registry with uh, JavaScript modules interacting with WebAssembly. Uh, on the WARG registry, we can now have web WebAssembly modules as first class uh, embeddable uh, in, in, uh, modules that, that can run in different environments. And uh, when we want to embed components in the NPM registry, we can possibly even have cross-linkage workflows and things like this that might develop in future so that you can actually lean on, on kind of cross-registry WASM embedding. Uh, so anyway, this talk is about the JavaScript toolchain. So what is the JavaScript toolchain? We have the following tools. So jQuery transpile, and the idea of jQuery transpile is something like take a component and convert it into a module that has the same interface in the, as a JavaScript module. So you just convert a component and you get an ES module that you can import and get the same interface for it. Uh, you, you can also do custom instantiations and have more, more customizability, um, but jQuery transpile is this, this main command. Componentize JS is the ability to host JavaScript inside of components. So if you're, uh, where, where transpilation of a component allows you to embed components in the JavaScript ecosystem, uh, Componentized JS allows you to take JavaScript applications, embed them inside of uh, WebAssembly components, and run them in other ecosystems. So you actually embed the entire runtime. And Preview 2 Shims is an implementation of WASI Preview 2 for JavaScript that works in browsers and Node.js and should hopefully work in other platforms eventually. Uh, so the, the last thing we also have is a bunch of APIs for Jayco. So uh, Jayco can actually also be used as an API to get access to the transpilation. For example, in a build plugin for, for Rolla, for Vite or something, it can be used as a dependency. Uh, and, and it can be also used to get access to a lot of the, the component model tooling, which is exposed in a way that can be easily used in, in JavaScript. So that's the motivation. I'm now going to jump straight into demos. Uh, so the, the demo that I've chosen to do today is uh, just, just this fun one, and please don't read too much into it, which is commands in the browser. So you we're running uh, CLI applications in the browser. And if you, if you want to see what the VS Code team did with this, you can go to Dirk's talk tomorrow. Um, but uh, in, in this example, I've got uh, an environment in the browser that has an embedded file system. Uh, I can uh, use some basic commands uh, to see, see uh, the, the files and, and read these files. And I've also got access to some CLIs, like WASM Tools CLI. So I can actually use WASM Tools to print. Uh, I've got a dummy component here. So I can say WASM Tools print, and it'll, it'll run WASM Tools in the browser and print that component. So I've got all these sort of things running. And, and the, what I'm going to try and convince you is that this is incredibly easy to do with components uh, when, you, when you have these primitives because you, uh, everything's just running on the same uh, WASI subsystem, and uh, everything can just be compiled as a command and run in the browser and transpiled. So uh, yeah, uh, to, to demonstrate that, let me show you uh, the, um, an example of how I can build something to run in this app. So I was looking to see if I could find like a nice, like really simple, like cow say kind of thing. And I, I searched on crates.io and I found this thing called charase. Uh, so I was like, okay, cool. Let, let me try and build this and, and run it in the browser. So I can do cargo build target wasm32 wasi and build it for release. Uh, so it's just a, a, a wasi build. And then this is where I would normally for the component mod, I would do wasm tools uh, component new. And I would build this component uh, uh, in, into, into, a, into a command component. Uh, I always hate locating the adapter, so I have a wrapper for it in Jayco. So I'm just going to use Jayco new, uh, and I'm going to say use the flag wasi command, and and then just point it at this target wasm32 wasi release of chara, and we're going to output this as a chara.wasm component. So I'm, I'm, this is building it into the command component, and now I'm going to go back to my command app here, and in the browser I haven't refreshed the page. I can sort of install chara to this chara.wasm. 
uh, I, I never got around to doing insertions in the CLI, so apologies, but I, it's actually the commands uh, chara.wasm uh, here. So I'm going to install that, and hopefully it'll work, where I can do chara say hello components. And so I was able to install, I was able to build a, a Rust application for the browser and, and load it into the page without refreshing in the same virtual machine because it's all just running on the same, same WASI. Uh, so it's like, it, it's, it's a really nice abstraction. It, you can do some cool stuff with it. Uh, it, it actually, I, what I meant to show with this demo is actually that I could first use jQuery to test it. So we have a jQuery run command as well, which will do the same thing, run things as a CLI. And I can also do jQuery run chara.wasm and then say hello components. And jQuery itself is running in Node.js. And so this will then be running it on top of the Node.js APIs. And it's using Node.js's uh, representation of all the WASI APIs. So you're getting the Node.js, basically the Node.js host, uh, as if you were just on this sort of POSIX machine. Uh, so something went wrong. Oh, uh, it's the, in this folder. Uh, this is the actual component. And then I get, the, get it running in, in, in Node.js. Um, so, that's WASI commands, and, and they're really fun. They're, it's, it's, it's a great thing, but as I say, this is, this is demo material. Uh, don't read too much into it. But the interesting part is what's going on. So uh, this, this is all running in, in this kind of a, a module shell where I've got the, the main terminals all running on Xterm. Uh, so that, that does all the heavy, heavy lifting in terms of providing a terminal in the browser. Uh, and then I've just wrapped it with literally copy-paste uh, off Stack Overflow to like make it a repl. Um, and then the, the, the main guts of the application is the shell reactor component. So there's the, the, the shell is itself written in Rust, the actual shell of the application. And uh, this is uh, transpiled with Jaco to run in the browser. And then what I'm doing is uh, have this create terminal command that's able to take a line from the terminal and then it just pipes it into the shell and, and tells the shell to run it. So it's just a basic uh, kind of repo uh, loop. And the, the last thing I have to do is pipe the standard out and standard error from the sort of base WASI uh, into that terminal so that it, it displays everything uh, uh, into the screen, uh, right? And then inside of that shell reactor component, I have all of my, my tools available, uh, which are running on top of this preview two shims implementation that's running in the browser. And uh, yeah, that, that's, that's really what, uh, that, that's all the pieces and how they fit together. Uh, so let me go into that reactor and show you how that is how that works. So to to do this, what I'm going to do is go back to a, a like a simpler version of the shell, uh, and uh, in in this example, I've got this this uh, actually first just to show you that the demo is actually as I said it was. Uh, here, here's the, the the HTML I'm loading X term. I've got an import map that's mapping uh, bytecode lines preview two shims in the browser. It's just installed in Node modules. Uh, it just makes it easy so I don't have to have a build step. And uh, then I've got my terminal, I've got my, my shell being loaded, and from the, the IO of preview two, I'm setting this, the standard out and standard error streams to pipe into the terminal. Uh, and so I'm calling shell.init on startup, and on each line I'm calling shell.execute. So that's, that's everything that's running in the page. And uh, so the shell is this Rust application here where it's implemented as a component and implements the init and execute methods and then just has some, some bare bones code to do that. So the, the reason why this is a reactor and not a command is because uh, whereas a command has a run function that runs from end to end and has the sort of standard POSIX primitives, a reactor can be more like a library and it doesn't have to be uh, torn down when it's finished. It can sort of continue to exist and you can have these commands that can be called again. So the, the build for Reactor is very much the same. You do a, car, a target build for WASM32 WASI. Uh, I'm just going to do a, a debug build for this one. And I'm going to use my jQuery new again because I hate locating the adapter for demos, uh, which is uh, WASI Reactor. And I'm going to convert that target WASM32 WASI component of shell.wasm uh, in the debug folder into uh, shell.wasm component. And then I'm going to use, this is where I now need to show you jQuery transpile. So previously, everything was happening in the browser. It was all wrapped up magically, so I could just load these, these commands into the browser. But to get the, from the WebAssembly to the JavaScript, I'm using jQuery transpile. So I'm going to take the shell comp a component that I just made, and I'm going to transpile it into the equivalent JavaScript. So shell, uh, jQuery transpile shell.wasm, and I'm going to output it into the lib folder. 
and that will go ahead and uh, it basically build up all of the glue codes. I've got libshell.js, which represents that component module. And uh, it, it automatically has WASI dependence where I've used things like FS or I've used things like print line. It'll know to use the WASI functions for it because I built the WASI version. It also has the types included so that if you're importing this in a JavaScript application, you can get good typing when you're, when you're using the application. So that's in libshell. Uh, and uh, I can then, in this demo, just load that libshell. And so, so that's really all it is. Uh, the rest of it's just running on a local server. So when I go back and refresh this, I don't have any of my fancy commands now, but I've just got like that basic echo from that application. Uh, and so it's, it's just running this, this, this very simple shell application. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the, that, I will go a step further since the demo seems to be working. I, I, I told you there were a lot of demos. Uh, we haven't even begun to, to get started. This is why I'm going fast. Um, <laughs> So this skips out the whole step of like how I got Wasm tools working in the browser, right? So I've just got this reactor, great, but I'm not showing any component linkage. So uh, if I want to have other commands, like I was able to like create an echo here uh, and, it, and it works and I could do the same sort of technique for other commands, but I really want to be building in other code. So I don't just want this, this single shell component, I want to be calling out to other components that I can run. Uh, for example, when I had my, my, I was able to do Wasm tools uh, and, and print out a binary. So I'm going to build in WASM tools into this component as well. Uh, so the way, I, the way we do that is we have a, a, a width definition of this shell interface where we've got these, this init and execute that defines the reactor. And I'm going to update this to add an import to WASM tools, which was a component I created earlier. So I have available a WASM tools component that say I got from the WAG registry or something. And for this demo, I'm not doing full registry integration because I want to show the fine-grained linkage in, in the JavaScript ecosystem. Uh, so I've, I've located it in my WIT folder at the, the depths folder. In, it's wasmtools, wasmtools.wit. And I've got this nice wasmtools component that makes available all of the wasmtools interfaces for me to use in a way that I can embed in any component environment. So I'm going to add this as an import to this WIT file and say import uh, the, the WASM tools, and it's called the tools interface. And this will now give me access to that component inside of my Rust application. And to use it, I would do the um, uh, use create local WASM tools, tools. And that'll give me that interface from the component. And now I can write my, uh, my WASM tools command in my, in my application. So again, this is all demo material, so uh, I'm not going to do proper error checking, etc., right now. Um, but let's just see if we can write a WASM tools print and see if we can get that to work. All right. Uh, So for a print command, what I need to do is I first need to read the file that's being printed. So I'm going to read the bytes using the read file interface. And I'm going to read from the argument that's parsed. And then I'm just going to unwrap that because I'm not going to do error handling for today. I can now call my tools print method, which will take those bytes as a slice, uh, print them, and return the output. And I'm going to print that to the console. And uh, again, I need to handle errors on that because the component interface for print in, in WASM tools uh, will actually return a result. So that's where it's using first class Rust result. And that's it. So I can now build uh, this application for um, uh, go through the same build steps, uh, create our reactor, and then do the transpile step. And now if I refresh the demo, I should have an error. Great. So, OK, we've, we've got an error in the console. And if you look at this error, uh, this is that it can't locate the WASM tools because it's locating it from local WASM tools forward slash tools, which doesn't exist. And the reason why was because I didn't include WASM tools in my component build. So uh, what, I, uh, what I'm going to do is show you how I can use linking in the browser to get access to that tool. So, Separately, 
I don't know why that this, there's so much demo material in this talk. It's, it's not, not a good idea. But um, separately, I, I have WASM tools over here. Here's the component, wasmtools.component.wasm. And I've jQuery transpiled it. So jQuery uh, transpile WASM tools or WASM tools. And that's put it there as JavaScript. So can I link this version that I've just transpiled of, uh, of my shell to this version that I just transpiled of WASM tools? And to do that, I can use a feature in transpile called map. So when I, when I transpile the shell component, I can map uh, the, what's local WASM tools forward slash tools, and I can map it to, as, as a JavaScript module, it's going to be in the shell lib folder. So I need to backtrack down to the shell folder, then backtrack down to the folder below, go into my reactors folder, and then go into my WASM tools folder, and then it's going to be wasmtools.component.js. So that'll tell it how to find it. And now if I run that, uh, it'll find the module. So it's just loaded it in the browser. Um, but now it gives me a new error. This uh, requested module does not provide an export name print. And the reason for this is that uh, when you have, uh, when, I, when I imported WASM tools over here, I imported the tools interface. I did not import the implementation that was provided by the component of the WASM tools reactor, which itself has an interface uh, tools that is exported as a tools export. So what I have to do is I have to map my print interface that's being imported into the tools export interface of the WASM tools component and its print method. And so I'm going to update my mapping here to rather map into the tools. And to just illustrate that exactly, let me actually just open up the, um, uh, the, the, the folder that's being output by the JS module system here. So it's loading print from this WASM tools component, which is just a, a function export. But it's supposed to be off the tools interface. So I can use this hash in the map, which is going to direct it to the tools interface. And when I do that, I import the tools interface, and then I get the print method off the tools interface. And if I refresh that, I now finally have an application working. That was the hardest part of the demo. So if we got through that, we, we've, we've got through the hardest thing that you'll have to see today. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, and now I can print my, my WASM. I've got WASM tools running in the browser. So that's an example of how you can take another component, link it in dynamically. And this is dynamic component linking in the browser. And you can kind of have this interop uh, between the components in the JavaScript ecosystem. Normally, you would use uh, Peter uh, uh, Huynes. How do you say his second name? Uh, Peter Huynes, uh, Cargo Component Project. Uh, and uh, Cargo Component will do all of the linking for you and bundle everything together. Um, but in this case, I wanted to just show that dynamic linking so you can see how it, how it works in the browser. Uh, if, if I want to recreate that kind of composition model, I can use Wasm Tools Compose. So uh, the, the, the way that we would, so in the shell, uh, let me just show, show on the network tab. Uh, it's, it's loading in the, uh, the WASM tools component, and then it's loading in uh, from, sorry, from the shell, it's seeing the dependency on the WASM tools component and, and loading in WASM tools, which is then loading in all of the WASM files and, and executing them in the browser. If I wanted to do everything in a single component, I can use WASM tools compose. And WASM tools compose will take that, that sort of direct linkage between shell and WASM tools and turn it into a single component that represents both. So I can say wasm tools compose, and I can go for the shell.wasm, which is the original shell, compose it with the definition of wasm tools in the wasm tools uh, reactor, which is in reactors wasm tools, and uh, output that as shell.compose.wasm. The shell.compose.wasm now has wasm tools in line. It's still passing through to all of the WASI interfaces, which are separate. And I can then transpile that shell.compose.wasm uh, I'll, I'll transport it out to the lib folder again. And this time, I don't need to do any mapping because it's included the WASM tools component inside of it. So it was a single component that had WASM tools and the shell, and I've transpiled it all in a single operation as shell.compose.js. So if I update my demo to instead load from shell.compose.js, I'll get the same thing running, but it's not separately loading WASM tools. It's now loading it all in a single component that bundled them both together. 
and uh, it's still able to do the, the print using that same implementation running in the browser. So now the composed WASM. So you can see that the, the component model actually has these composition semantics through the first class instantiation and static linkage, and you can have these different kind of linkage scenarios. So complex to show, um, but I really wanted to just get it down and, and, and go through that because I think it's, you know, you have to see it to kind of get a picture for it. And uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, and, and luckily we got there in the end. So yeah, this is what we were looking at. We have the shell reactor component loading from wasm fills and any other commands. And these are all running as separate WASM components. And you can use WASM tools compose to get a single component. So you can either run them separately and transpile them into the browser, use WASM tools compose, get a single thing and run in the browser. And so you get these graphs of applications. We can have JS modules interacting with these WebAssembly components. And in this kind of transpilation operation, we're getting graphs of JS and WebAssembly. And it's still just glue. It's still just glue being generated, but it's glue with a future lowering. And so uh, this is the, the first class static semantics of the component model mean that you have something that your build tooling can reason about and you can do cross WASM uh, optimizations, et cetera. Right. So the next thing I want to talk about a little bit is, is the WASI linking, which is the other piece of this, uh, this picture. I, I'm, I'm just implicitly linking against WASI that's running in the browser, an instance of, of WASI running in the browser. And this is, uh, it's, it's almost like there is a, a, a single WASI implementation against which everything can link, which represents that same uh, machine. Uh, and it's just another import. Uh, that, and uh, it's sort of like, like an ambient import, there's no ceremony because it can just be loaded from the node modules or through your standard resolution when you're running in JS environments. At the same time, you can create in JS custom WASI instances as well. So it, this is where you get in your JS embedding the choice between virtual platform layering or sort of direct host usage, you can create these different linking models. In Node.js, it actually has an implementation of WASI that's running on core WASM. And uh, th this Node.js WASI is available as a core module uh, that you can import from Node colon WASI. So that means any JS module in the NPM ecosystem can import Node colon WASI but it doesn't support this shared ambient linkage. You have to actually instantiate it every time because of the shared memory properties. And so with this, the benefit of the preview two model is we can have this ambient shared WASI where lots of modules like can just link against the same WASI instance and be able to be represent, be able to share the same file system where they want. And, and you can define those boundaries by these instancing of the actual underlying WASI implementation. So it's looking like we should be able to provide a preview to in Node.js, something like this, where you could actually just import standard out and write to standard out in Node, which is exactly how this terminal is running and how it was able to run everything without any other build step because it knew where to find the standard out. And alongside this ambient mode, we will still provide instancing. So you can create custom instances of WASI that represent virtual machines. All right, so that's jQuery transpile and WASI. <laughs> Uh, the componentized JS project is um, uh, the, the uh, just seeing how I'm doing for time. Yeah, I think we're all right for time. So uh, componentized JS is the other side of this, which is saying, well, we want to take JavaScript, we want to embed it in, in other component environments. And so it's, it's a project that allows you to write components as uh, JavaScript modules that you can then build and package up and uh, it embeds a spider monkey. Uh, so it's actually a, a browser embedding uh, that, that's useful for sort of uh, Im embedding environments where you wanna make JavaScript available as a language. For example, you could target any world. So if you wanted to write a CLI tool in JavaScript, you could target this, uh, this WASI CLI run world, uh, WASI command world on, on WASI CLI run, and you can, you can uh, create a, a simple command. Uh, now I'm gonna keep the componentized JS demo relatively simple so that we're not gonna get too much into the demo weeds again. But what I'm gonna do is show an example of uh, taking that same shell that we were just dealing with and saying, well, in instead of writing it in Rust, could I write that shell in JavaScript? So I have the same world that I'm targeting, which has a shell interface and an execute function. I'm gonna write it in JavaScript and then using componentized JS, get a component that represents that same shell. So let me just show you that, and hopefully, uh, with some luck, it'll it'll work out as well. So let's let's take a look at the at the wood again for the shell. And I'm going to remove the the wasm tools import because we're going to skip that out for now. So I've got 
this shell interface with two functions, init and execute. They both return a result. In JavaScript, top-level results are treated as errors, so we can just implement them as normal functions. So I'm going to write a shell.js and create that interface and add the init method and the execute line method. And for the uh, execute line method, let's just do a simple echo again. So we're going to get the args as the line splitting on a space. And then we're going to switch on the args. And if it's an echo, we can uh, just log it using console.log. Uh, so to use componentize.js, I'm going to use jco's componentize command, which is a wrapper around componentize.js, so componentize. Uh, you would normally install them both from npm, they're JS native tools. And I'm going to point it at the shell.js, and then point it at the width from our, our shell uh, application, because we're using the same width. And that's going to output my shell.js.wasm. Uh, there's one other thing I need, I forgot to add to the componentize command, which is I need to explicitly enable standard out because by default, it doesn't assume arbitrary capabilities. So let's run that. And then I can do the same step with jco transpile. So I've got this shell.js.wasm, and I'm going to transpile it out, and I'm going to put it in the same shell lib folder uh, just for convenience. So that's shell lib shell.js.js. So let me update to shell.js.js, and let's check our demo. Uh, so I, I don't have any of the other commands, but I'm running JavaScript in SpiderMonkey in the browser, and I've got my, my echo command, right? <laughs> so, all right, one more demo, and then we're there. So, yeah, uh, thanks for bearing with me. I'm going to show you Wazzy Vert next, which is all of the time I'm using Preview 2 Shims, which is a browser implementation of Wazzy. Uh, instead, I'm going to use Wazzy Vert, which is a WASM-first implementation of, of Wazzy. So you can basically, uh, instead of running on the WASI that's in the browser, we can actually build that WASI implementation itself in. And then all we need to depend on is the standard out, basically, because we can actually bring the file system and all these things up into the virtualization layer. And this is the sort of virtual platform layering story. And this is just a very, very simple demo. Um, the, the, there's a lot of like, much more exciting things you can do with this. But I'll just show you uh, a, a very simple demo against, against the last component we wrote. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this, uh, just to demonstrate it really simply, is um, load uh, that shell width that we're writing to again. And this time I'm going to add a WASI import, because WASI is always available. I don't need to do, do anything special to locate it. Uh, so I'm going to import uh, WASI CLI uh, and the environment interface, which is environment variables. So this gives, gives access to environment variables. And then in this JS application that I'm building to that world, I'm now able to import from the environment interface, which is WASI CLI environment. So I've got access to this get environment, which is the sort of POSIX primitive. In my init function, I'm going to call get environment. Unfortunately, we don't yet have support uh, for first class objects. So I need to use object.fromEntries to turn the key value list into an actual JS object. And this is going to give me a mutable uh, environment variable in the, in the local scope, which the execute function can always check and access, which will have all the environment variables. Now I can update my echo command to do a replacement. Say I want to replace my environment variables. Uh, I can do a, uh, a JavaScript regex. So if it's a dollar in environment variable, we're going to replace it with the um, look it up in the environment object. And if it's not found, we'll just return it originally. And I need to add a slice one there because we don't want the dollar. And that should do it. Uh, so let's run through the, the commands again, which was componentize. And that'll give me the shell.js that I can now run in my shell. Now to set environment variables, say I had a production environment variable. So it's an application that was using environment variables and I want to set them. I can use wasivert. So I've got this existing shell.js.wasm component that I can run anywhere. And it's going to read some environment variables. Let's use WASI vert to set some environment variables in that component before we even embed it. So with WASI vert, I can say set an environment variable. Say we just want to say production is one. 
And I'm going to apply this virtualization to that shell.js.wasm file. And I'm going to output it as shell.js.vert.wasm. So this is the, the JS engine running the JS code, now wrapped in a virtualization, setting the environment variables that it was accessing the environment variables from. And now let's transpile that with jQuery transpile, shell.js.vert.wasm. I'll put that into the shell lib folder and update the demo to access shell.js.vert.js. Where's my typo? Oh, transpile, thank you. Uh, something looks wrong here. Well, maybe it's right, we'll try it. Um, and so I have my, my echo command, which is not working. Damn it. It's always, always a chance of that happening. Uh, so I'm componentizing with standard out enabled. And I'm verting shell.js.wasm into shell.js.vert.wasm and transpiling that into shell lib. Yeah, this looks wrong. What's happening? Oh, man. The demo gods are not, not serving me well today. Uh, huh. Let's have a look at the console and see if we're getting anything. Nothing at all. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Uh, OK, well, um, let's just pretend that worked, shall we? <laughs> we, we got 90% of the way. I, I did warn you that, that there was a good chance that something, something was going to go wrong. But uh, it does work, I, I promise you. Uh, but uh, I, I won't go through live debugging right now. Uh, it wor worked every time that, that, I, that I went through this. But uh, yeah, so with, with Wazivert, uh, we're able to take this application and uh, we're able to actually bring in parts of the WASI implementations into the, into the virtualized version of the component that we can then embed again. Uh, so yeah, uh, that, that's, that, those are the, the, the various pieces. And so today it's just end and FS support for being able to mount a file system, managing environment variables. Um, but there's a lot of options for flexible virtualization here where we can have fully functional virtual hosts being embedded. Um, the last thing I want to talk about very briefly is dynamic web, web applications, uh, operations. And that, that was actually the, the thing in the original uh, component that I, uh, when I was showing the dynamic loading of commands into the browser, how I was able to do that was writing some custom uh, resources that are able to interact with, with, the, with the browser world. So there, there's some really interesting ways in which you can open up the browser functionality and with Wasm BindGen has this this web syscrate, which has uh, high-level operations for working with the web. Uh, you, you can go very far with this using WASM resources, which represent uh, sort of class-like semantics for working with objects. Uh, and um, the, the example here that I was using for, for loading components dynamically was this is how I was putting that together. So I had a component resource where I was able to actually dynamically instantiate this resource uh, inside of the browser dynamically load it with some JS, but sort of uh, coordinate that from the WebAssembly component side. And the execute function, if it returned a component, we would then separately call this execute component, something like a sort of a, uh, a resume uh, approach to running that command com component. And that's how I was able to achieve that. I would love to show you some more demos, but I am all demoed out after doing that today. So uh, if you're interested in seeing more of this in action and using these tools, come along to the Componentized JS event on Friday. Please try it out. Uh, and uh, we, if, you, if you haven't signed up for the event yet, you can find it on Eventbrite if you search for Componentize. So anything that will come up for that keyword. Uh, and I uh, look forward to seeing you uh, there or otherwise on GitHub. Uh, so thanks very much. Here are the project links that you can try out. So, cool.